damn it. I'm sorry about this, and I'm pissed at the people who made me do it, but I'm about to agree with William Lane Craig. And I'm not talking about, you know, pepperoni pizza is awesome, raping is bad, orgasms are fun kind of agreeing. I'm about to agree with him on a theological issue. In fact, I'm about to agree with him about the definition of the word atheist in opposition to a number of prominent atheists. It never should have come to this. But somebody sent me a link to Craig's podcast with the hope that I could refute this point that he's making. And unfortunately, in this instance, I had to side with him. You know, we talk a lot in atheist circles about what the word atheist means, mostly because our intellectual opponents have such a vested interest in misdefining it. They like to try to paint a picture that obscures the burden of proof by pretending that it's incumbent upon us to disprove God's existence. You know, they like to say that atheism is just as unjustifiable as religion. After all, if I can't prove that God exists and you can't prove that he doesn't, then we're both on equal intellectual footing in some warped view of logic they like to subscribe to. Now, I don't need to waste any time pointing out the flaw in this argument. Rejecting a claim and making a claim are qualitatively different things. But what's more, atheists, at least in debate, don't generally claim that there is no God. They simply point out that the burden of proof that there is a God has not been met. This leads to a lot of graphs and Venn diagrams about the difference between knowledge and belief, theism, and Gnosticism, etc., leads a lot of people to have to repeatedly make the perfectly valid argument that atheism isn't the positive statement that there is no God, it's a rejection of the positive claim that there is. That is a valid distinction. And because of these tireless efforts at misdirection, it's a necessary one. The problem arises when atheists try to take this same principle and apply it to the word belief. Now, I just listened to a seven-minute, very well-thought-out, very well-spoken piece where an atheist vehemently denied that atheism was the belief that there is no God, claiming instead that it was a lack of belief in gods. And that is not a valid point. Hell, it's not even a meaningful one. And yet you could hop onto YouTube right now and find dozens of very intelligent atheists fervently arguing it. So first, let me formulate the argument that I'm disagreeing with. The YouTube video I just watched used the analogy of an observer in court, right? Defendant walks into the courtroom. You know nothing about her case. She might be guilty. She might be innocent. You don't even know what she's charged of. It's not incumbent on you at this point to formulate a belief. If your friend turns to you at this point and says, well, she looks guilty, you can point out what an absurd statement that is without arguing that she's innocent. In this instance, belief needn't be binary. I can reject your claim that she's guilty without offering a positive claim that she's innocent. My position can simply be that you've not met the burden of proof. And when you're trying to make the point about whether or not atheism is a positive claim, this is a great analogy. But the analogy breaks down when you're talking about belief. Because when it comes to the God question, you're not an observer in the court. You're the judge. You can't be an impartial observer in this one because regardless of your knowledge, your belief demands action. Now, there's a billion God claims, but for this point, let's just deal with two. That there is a God and that he demands your worship. Now, you can't stand on the fence here. Either you're worshiping him or you're not. If you are, it's because you believe that he exists. If you're not, it's because you believe that he doesn't. This is nothing about what you know, of course, but one way or the other, you have to act on what you believe. If you don't worship a god or hate fags like he tells you or whatever, it's because you don't believe he exists. In fact, pretending that there's a substantive difference between saying that you believe X doesn't exist and you lack a belief that X does exist is just silly unless you're talking about something with absolutely no consequences. But when it comes to virtually all God claims, even inaction requires the formulation of a belief. If I I tell you the world is going to end if you don't dance like a chicken right now, by not dancing like a chicken, you're expressing your active disbelief in my claim. And if I tell you that you're going to burn in torment for eternity if my magical friend doesn't submerge you in the name of the space carpenter, you absolutely have to formulate a conclusion about that. You might change that conclusion as you get more or better evidence, but at all times you have to either believe it's true or false. Now, for a lot of you, of course, this seems like a silly distinction to devote an entire diatribe to, but when you're talking to theists, the difference between what a person knows and what a person believes is important as hell, and it's a lot harder to explain if there's you know, a bunch of atheists out there confusing the issue unnecessarily. This distinction matters. When I'm arguing with a theist, I want to own the fact that I don't believe them, and that if they respect the rules of evidence and logic, they shouldn't believe them either. Theistic claims get evaluated by the same standards as every other claim. So no, I'm not making the positive claim that God doesn't exist, but I am making the positive claim that the evidence for God's existence is insufficient to warrant belief. And if I dance around this by trying to draw a line between disbelief and lack of belief, I'm undercutting that point in an effort to confuse the semantics. What's more, I'm weakening the point that the burden of proof is on them by retreating way further than logic would dictate. Hell, it's like I'm saying that I don't even have the burden of proof to demonstrate that you have the burden of proof.
And like I said, a lot of very prominent atheists disagree with me here. So if I'm misrepresenting the point or I'm just incorrect, I invite them to point out where I fucked up my logic. After all, I'm not saying you're definitely wrong, but I'm definitely saying I believe you are.